Okay, well, really quick, when you mentioned the request for proposal, um, does that really go down, do you think, to the lowest common denominator, which is price, when you, when you get in that game and you're, you're competing against other firms? Or do they take into consideration other factors and values? It's very interesting that you say that because um, price is a factor, but most companies that are doing an RFP will actually like give you a weighted average as to the factors that they consider most important. Mm. Um, at least the ones that are like most transparent about it. Um, price is definitely a big concern, but you know, as I, I constantly remind myself, there is no, purpose in being busy for the sake of being busy yeah if you can't get a valuable return on your effort then there's no point in taking on the case because you just add to your stress and you add to your staff and if it's not generating income then it's not really worth it and i have a like a great example of this because I'll, I'll never forget it. it was a real watershed moment for me as a practice director we were doing an rfp for what's turned out to now be one of our largest clients and we were competing against some like big boys, you know, some really well-known firms in the country. And frankly, I was just happy to be invited to the dance. Um, and this RFP was massive, John. I mean, our response was probably like 80 pages. I mean, it was huge. And I got a call, I got an email from the GC. And he says to me, Jonathan, we love your proposal, but your prices are about 30% higher than your nearest uh, competitor for this proposal. And can you just you know, explain to me why? And I remember getting that and being like, oh my God, what do I do, blah, blah, blah. You know? And I started like drafting a response. And you know how when you're like drafting an email and it doesn't feel quite right and you don't hit send and then you like mold over. Every time I tried to draft something up that afternoon, it just looked like crap, to be honest with you. It looked like I was using buzzwords and talking about how we're like an attorney first firm and less about pushing it down to the common. And like, you know, finally, um, I just said, you know what, screw it. I'm going to call him. So I picked up the phone. He picked up, fortunately. And I said, listen, man, like, look, if price is your consideration and that's your main factor here, then we're not the firm for you. We're just not the firm. Yeah. You know, we're not going to nickel and dime you. We're not going to charge you for X, Y, and Z. We're going to work to completion and we work for success. But you know, if you want me to throw you a bone and lower the fees 5%, I will. But at the end of the day, like I respect the people that work for me too much. I respect myself too much to cut out our profitability mm -hmm. just to get your business and picking up the phone and like explaining that that's our ethos was like the best move that we got. So we ended up winning the RFP and I went to the GC. I was like, do you, you know, I told you on the phone call that, that I would lower my price 5%. He's like, nah, don't even worry about it. <laughs> you know, so I think if you can show the value through the services that are offered, and that's what's really interesting. Like a lot of the companies that are looking to be making a change right now, you know, they're wanting to have access to attorneys. They're wanting to have access to real-time information and updates. They're looking for a higher quality level of service because immigration has become a more challenging field of endeavor with the current administration. And capitalizing on that change and understanding that it costs us as attorneys more time and effort in order to get something to the point of success needs to be reflected in the price that you charge. Thank you for listening to this episode. For previous episodes and more, please visit the podcast page of our website, immigrationlawyerstoolbox.com. You can also visit the Toolbox YouTube and LinkedIn pages to catch the video versions of these podcasts, news updates, and a lot more. Immigration lawyers can also contact me to join the private Facebook page. The email is info at immigrationlawyerstoolbox.com.